Hello, everybody, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. This is part two of painting the dark fantasy, romanticism, gothic, grotesque, uh, surreal uh, watercolor painting. The purpose of this was uh, mentioned in the previous video, kind of a therapeutic approach. So I apologize if the painting is um, dark and spooky, but um, as I said in the other video, um, between me and my fiance and our families, we're, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of health issues starting to take place in our extended families, and um, this week has been really rough. And early in the week, I had a friend from high school, um, college, etc., pass away. So. Um, this is kind of just, you know, the therapeutic aspect while also exploring um, kind of darker content matter. So I apologize in advance if it gets, I don't know if you'd say, use the word disturbing or what, but it is something different and I think you'll enjoy it. Um, I did the wet and wet stage so that's the video right before this. I can put a link in the description below. And now my idea is to kind of play with the softness and opacity. I may wind up turning to more peg watercolors or just super thick application of them. This is something that uh, me and Joe Menza had talked about. Joe Menza is another watercolorist uh, YouTube painter. And he had come across an article on handprint.com, which is a fantastic rab rabbit hole of watercolor theory and approach, what's not, where there's this thing called bronzing, where if you paint too thickly with watercolor, it can leave it with a kind of sheen or a leathery type effect to it. And um, you're not getting the, the pure effect of the pigment and the paint. Um, but I'm gonna try to exploit that within this um, painting, having the softness and the, um, the harshness. So I'm taking the number four rigger. This is a mixture of ultramarine blue and the um, raw sienna, bird sienna, sorry. And putting ideas in place might come back over it. Ultramarine, burnt sienna, throw some light red oxide in there. This is far background tree line. And I'll let that hit that wet and wet diffuse. I'm kind of just using it texturally. The sky's reflection, that line right here come down here into the water. And that's the mailman. Some castle elements in that shadow. Some Payne's gray. There's that shoreline, which 
will reflect down as well. So since the light source is behind, we're going to have quite a bit of shadows and not much light on this water. Take the hake. Start filling that in. And I'll come back to this in a bit. I don't want to um, work too much of one area at a time. Going with that light red oxide again, which I just splattered paint. and the ultramarine. Maybe this tree line back here. Now, a lighter wash. For background, rolling hills. which I can feed some color into for a little bit of variation. And I'll come back into it for the next one behind it. I'll let this one dry. Kind of build up to a kind of upright stairwell, stairway leading to this castle. Now, eventually, like I said, I'm gonna to go towards the surreal grotesque. So I think I will put in um, some crucifixion type items along this path. And we'll see where it takes us. taking the hake right now and just kind of texturizing this foreground some. Okay. Let's move to these trees. I haven't really put any trunks or branches in yet. And when using the hake in this fashion, be aware of um, repeated patterns. All right, I'm gonna do a, no, I'm not gonna pause yet for a dry off. Let me um, start envisioning these branches. Payne's gray, ultramarine, burnt sienna.
using the number four rigger still, so just use, using those two uh, brushes. I'll probably switch to the number one when finer uh, branches are needed. Right now it's just to kind of get Is in place. Now I'm going to do a pause for a dry off. Okay, after that quick dry off, I am thinking about those rolling hills. Let's use a lighter wash back here for this one. It's almost kind of just staining with dirty water. I might do one last rolling hill behind it after I do a dry off. I could feed a little wet and wet for a little idea of Hedge rows, etc. Okay, I can do a little bit back here. Um, raw sienna with that ultramarine, kind of making that gray. Building up the darks in here. The light source is behind it, so this is going to be pretty dark. It winds up getting covered up by those trees. Ultramarine blue, Payne's gray. Shoreline. And then the water. Do the same thing with filling in some of these lighter areas. some darks. So I'm kind of just building this guy up. And this one right here, this mountain's dry so I can, this hill's dry so I can add might be too dark. And we're going to wind up having rows here. darker side of the mountain, the hill. Here 
here's that stairwell leading down and then going up into the picture plane and then coming back up here. I think this background wash is pretty dry so I can do my hedgerow here. I'm thinking that I may omit what I originally had planned of doing um, the grotesque with the crucifixes. I don't think it's necessary at this point. I'm just trying to vary this pattern. shadows that they're going to cast. I'll even do a little bit of dry brush. Now, almost just a stain. Everything's starting to come along. Let's move to our foliage. Raw sienna. Ultramarine. Payne's gray. I may need a little bit more water. Yeah. Unfortunately, I just want to add just a teeny bit. I'll probably pull water off of the hake so I can get better stippling effect. Now this very edge would be covered by a mat, but I often, I always, I always say paint to the edges of the paper just so you don't have that white throwing you off and it can um, help you imagine the whole scene better, especially for something imaginary like this. get our darker mixes with ultramarine and burnt sienna. I could also use burnt umber, but I haven't used any of that yet. I haven't used any of that recently. I'm tracing a little bit over what's previously there while also adding some new elements so that I can get a sense of depth. I think I'm going to want a foreground tree here. Grab the number one rigger. Actually, no, this one's too big. I had well, like a dollar brush offline. I thought about trying it out, but I'll save it for another day. Let's see. Yeah, 
at number one. There's teeny branches. Just doing a, um, I think it's the deer horn technique from Chinese brush painting. I also have some come do the crab claw. trying to get the illusion of detail without spending so much time painting these uh, branches. That's something, just knowing myself, I don't have the patience for doing individual ones. Let's look at this background castle. We can't add too much detail because the light source is behind it. We just want to kind of get a little textured effects. Put a tree out alongside it. tree elements. I'm trying to uh, have a variety in spacing and size so that I can, um, so that just reads interesting. Could even put uh, fences back there, but I think I'll leave that be. Use my finger just to soften it up a little bit. In fact, with the lightest of washes, we can do. Oh, that's definitely not the lightest of washes. Look at the details back there. gate right here. Let's keep it in add some variety into those guys. Okay. This castle's edge Okay, back to the trees. Rossiana.
believe that right here, I was originally going to put um, some of those elements that I was talking about. Um, the kind of grotesque images, but I think it might be best if we just put a bush right here. This more accessible to people visually. I think, okay, we're about 26 minutes into this part, so I'm going to pause it. Well, I'm going to stop this part, and then I'm going to do one last video for this. So this kind of makes it easier for you guys to watch it in parts. And if you ever want to follow along, you're more than welcome to. Um, yeah, so I will talk to you all soon in a few. <laughs> all right.